it is known as it's known as what? It's a web. What happened to my PowerPoint? I may have to look for it again. Uh, my, when money is created in the in the in the present, it's known as commodity money. Mm -hmm. So I want I don't can you see this this PowerPoint? I think it's disappeared. Or maybe I have stopped sharing screen or share screen right here. Yes, so money is created on the at the moment is the is what you call commodity value. Commodity value is money for here and now, time and now. And you've had something uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a stock exchange known as mark to market. That's a commodity value. That means money is really commodity. When money is used for payment or for paying for something, like when you buy a pair of shoes from Walmart, why would you go to Walmart? When you buy a pair of shoes from Walmart or somebody or shoe rep, whoever, then that is utility value of money. And utility value is past value. It pays for value created in the past. Now, I want to tell you that Ubicoin has got two values, uh, commodity value of money and utility value of money. So you want to understand that very well so that you can see how Ubicoin matters to you and how you make money when you get Ubicoin. <clears throat> So the commodity value of money, as you can see on this slide, is this is this is the Bitcoin slide. Remember, Bitcoin was created in 2010, um, 20, 2009, then, but came online in 2010. But its value never materialized for a long time. It was until 2017. Bitcoin's value was just creeping, creeping, creeping on the floor, just crawling like a small caterpillar. Rolling, crawling. Then around 2016, it started waking up. I think this, 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 this like line here is the pupation period, like entering into a pupa, and then after that time, it began to change itself into a butterfly, injected some fluids in the wings, and then it started flying, 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 flying. And in 2017, it was completely off the ground, wings very strong. It is flying very, very fast, all the way to the top. That's Bitcoin in 2018 had a value of about twenty thousand dollars. See, this fifteen thousand. That value of Bitcoin <clears throat> soon after that crashed. This value you see of Bitcoin was what's called commodity value. People trading Bitcoin, but it's a very very long takeoff, very long runway, because there was nobody pushing Bitcoin after Bitcoin was invented the u.s government got very active and angry with it and tried to knock it out <laughs> satoshi nakamoto disappeared he was nowhere to be found and then uh, people other people came around and put it in the market and now it took off in 2017 like a rocket heading to the moon but then it reached the top and it was not able to recover from that ever since bitcoin has not gone back to 20. the reason this happened for Bitcoin is because commodity value is not sustainable. But you know, Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin as a um, commodity, like what you call the, the digital gold. You see, commodity value is just people speculating on its value, but you don't go shopping with it. And that's the, so it has no utility. Nobody pays electricity bills in this Bitcoin. They would have to change it into something else to so that they can go and pay the bills. And you could say that that is incomplete work by Satoshi, maybe because he was scared that the guys in government, but he never finished this project. And so once Bitcoin reached there, it needed something else. It needed use, usability or utility, but nobody created use and its price crashed. Although it's still very high, it's about what now? Seven, maybe seven thousand dollars here. It's not zero, but still not more than dollars. So it's still working as digital gold, but it is not truly finding its value back there. Maybe later on, when uh, some guys figure out how to make uh, Bitcoin usable. So if we come from there and come to Ubicoin, you will see how the value of Ubicoin has moved. On the ground from uh, 
just creeping on the ground, just like uh, the caterpillar. Uh, this, this, you know, Ubicoin went up online in 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 the May, in, in December 20, 2018. But then for a long time during the 2019, it was crawling on the ground, which is understandable, until maybe about January, and its value began to rise when some people went online and bought a lot of UBN, but then that was not followed. This could say maybe one person you get a spike going up, another person coming out in the buyout that we called people to participate in January this year. But since then, the value has been increasing, just like you saw Bitcoin Caterpillar increasing slowly, slowly, slowly. And then in March, we called for a mother another buyout and you see some people came in and bought bought but the, each time we get a spike it always goes back to zero spike goes back to zero and then we recently got a very huge spike that is in um, at the end of april and that spike went not to zero but very high now if you compare the price of ubicoin between january 20th and maybe april 30th bitcoin uh, ubicoin has gone up in value 2,000 times. If you bought um, UBN for, with one ETH at the, at the, in the middle of January here, one ETH, uh, which was about $125, it came and multiplied in value 2,000 times. That, that $125, you could buy 2,000 times, 2,000%, uh, as many UBNs as possible. So, uh, UBN was quite a bit in the marketplace, and you could come here and buy uh, 100,000 UBN for that one ETH, but now you cannot get anywhere close to that. You can get only not 100 million UBN with one ETH, but you cannot get 100 million UBN with one ETH. You get maybe 11 million. So this is what value means. This is um, what you call commodity value, where the price multiplies so much in your pocket as you go about your business and the price is multiplying. And this value comes from what you call speculator, speculation activities by the holders of the coin. And so we hear, this is May, beginning of May, and what we're doing is calling people, everyone in the community to come in and buy, help to buy out UBN so that we can, uh, so that it can it can reach it it can reach uh, its own peak. Like we can, we can have a flexion point. This is what this is what um, mm -hmm. UBN is attempting to do now. We're well, maybe somewhere here, and this means that UBN will not have to take all these years that Bitcoin took because we are talking about it. But no one was talking about Bitcoin here. In fact, many people are hiding, it. and so. Bitcoin is seeking, Ubicoin right now is seeking for a lift off like this to go to its moon, you know, then it can have this J-shaped curve going up. This is very important for everyone to understand because if we don't get this, then we miss out in the biggest, biggest, biggest takeoff possible. Now, uh, I just wanted to show you uh, that in uh, what we need to do in Phoenix Box. Yeah, but my slide um, is is I, I'm not able to come from the slide view, so that doesn't matter. Let's go to the next slide so that we can talk about the next value. The next value for UBN is to work as uh, an, a utility token. This is a utility value here, and we have created UBN as universal basic realistic income coin. And I want to show you directly what that means, universal, basic, realistic income coin. And this is where the rubber hits the road. Now, universal, basic, realistic income coin uh, is very significant because universal means everyone, everybody. Basic means the most basic needs of a human being. You know? Basic needs of a human being. If you look at the works of Maslow, uh, you will see what's a basic need. And so Ubicoin can cover universal basic needs. And it's realistic meaning that the, the need is realizable. Income, of course, is money to get it. So if you have 
everyone in the community having their needs met, then their life is <coughs> their life is realistic. And so universal basic realistic income coin. That's what UBRI stands for. UBRI coin. Okay, so you understand that. When this UBRI coin, this utility value comes from our basic understanding that you know you, you know we need health for everyone. Health is a basic need in uh, mass loss qualification. Health is a basic need. And then that health has to be sustainable. We found out that health, where health is not available for everybody, is because of the way health has been conceptualized by everyone in the world, including the WHO, the World Health Organization, because that's where we get understanding what is health. In definition of what of health by World Health Organization, say that health is a state of well-being, you know, for for the body. For psychology and even for economy, but even but when health was developing, uh, WHO was developing its operational theory. It just said that health is one health. If you're going to be healthy, we have to think about the animals, the environment where people live, and the humans themselves. And the animals meaning that the relationship between humans and animals, which is very very significant in terms of producing health in a human being. Why? because 99% of diseases that comes, become pandemics come from the animal kingdom. What are we dealing with today? Coronavirus. Where did corona come from? We are told it came from the bats in the bat market in, in, in Wuhan. I have no idea. But this virus like corona, they usually come from the animal kingdom. When they jump into humans, they cause pandemics. Okay, That's why animal health is important. And even to, until today, even have this, this theories of WHO coming from 1946 when the WHO was formed, they never helped to separate humans from animals. And we are enjoying an, a, an epidemic almost every year. Uh, like you, this is coronavirus is the biggest, but recently we had, uh, we had, uh, we had what? The, the flu, uh, the, the chicken flu, we had the swine flu, all those animals. We had Ebola from the monkeys and a lot of that. Environmental health is also important because if you live in a bad environment, you cannot improve in your health no matter what. Even if we come with injections and vaccines and stuff like that, antibiotics, bad environment will kill you, cause, cause short in your life. And so animal health, human health, and environmental health. Human health now refers to your biology, which depends on what you eat. If you eat bad stuff, <laughs> of course, you destroy your body, you drink bad stuff, the body gets destroyed. And so human health has a lot to do with what you eat and maybe a little to do with your genetics, but genes get modified and then you become better, okay? Uh, or you, got, you become sick depending on the environment where you live. So we call those epigenetics. Now in this theory, one health never produce health for anyone Including today, you have seen that coronavirus has managed to travel all over the world, affecting everyone equally. Okay, but this state of one health doesn't help people. One health does not does not produce health, has not produced health at all. So there is this this idea of one health without money or economic health doesn't work. But there's another theory that was brought forward not for health this time but for companies known as um, sustainable, sustainability theory, which was brought by Elkington in 1972. And he said that for companies to be successful, it has to think about human health, environmental health, and economic health. That means they, <laughs> for a company to be healthy economically, it has to be think, think about the people and the environment. That theory has now evolved something we call a corporate social responsibility. That dude has not produced anything. <laughs> yeah, CSR, he just reported in the stock market, people get a lot of money from it, but as, in, as far as health is concerned, it doesn't produce anything. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that the utility value of UBN, it comes from combining the two theories, one health theory and sustainability. That's important to know. And you can see this is the functional structure of sustainability of UBRI. And then you see how 
we put this on the ground by by creating an idea that we can inject we can inject economic health into health production and in order for economic health to occur we have to to put several things into consideration number one is the people people themselves who are going to become healthy and when people become healthy they can they can do good work but people don't become healthy without money and so for people to have money imagine it's a community in a village and uh, people don't have money in the village just spontaneously but they have to work to produce money if to work you have to produce something of quality that you're selling the the place where quality comes in is called the produce value addition center value addition is an idea of adding knowledge to a product for example if you get bananas in the village and then you just have bananas of course you can eat bananas or make them ripe and that's it if you don't do something else with the bananas they're going to decay and rot within maybe three weeks or a month to avoid bananas from rotting within a three weeks or a month you have to add value to the bananas what is value value is to know how it's called know-how of making something better to improve the thing the know-how comes from education system that's why we send children to school all the way to the university so they can learn how to change things in the community and those things become things of value the problem we have today is that we have money called fiat currency that doesn't get the knowledge out of the university by the way i'll tell you a little more about fiat I mean, Kenya shillings and money like that. Money is the channel through which knowledge travels to come to the village. Because you cannot have people coming from the university to the village to give knowledge and they have no money to do that. So you have to pay them. And then when you pay them, they will come down to the village. And of course, you have to give value, add value to the products. Once things have been added value, they have to be put in a marketplace, which is a retail store and then other people coming around can buy them or even better put them online on the on the super highway information super highway so that the information about the value added products can travel all over the world and find a bigger market and then what if you just set up a medical clinic right there and then you call that unit a urcc ubrica retail clinical center which is the nucleus for the operation of a local community chapter See, so if you're, you, you're in Kirinyaga, they grow bananas, you set up a produce value additional center for bananas, and then you put UBN in motion, that is where the utility function of UBN comes into play. UBN utility function comes into play as a channel of transportation of knowledge, and then once people have put value to their products in the local village, they can sell them on their local retail or even an uh, on the online region, I mean, taking the village level commerce to the cyberspace, and then everybody gets paid, money comes back to university, money comes back to the community, and that is the basic universal basic, uh, universal basic income, how it occurs. Now, <clears throat> before I go to this long equation here, there is, oh, oh I want to move this window here. So this is the equation, and you could say this is the basic equation for uh, the business model for Ubrica is that universal health access is equals to universal basic income. That means people having money, but universal basic income does not occur without knowledge from the university. That's called USDP multiplied by produce. Well, this should be a P, produce value addition center multiplied by Soko Janja, which is here, multiplied by her health clinic. Then all raised to the power UBN. So I want you to get this equation in mind. And I think I need to produce value addition center there. This equation and, and uh, when you have the produce value addition center, so this is a multiplicative, multiplic multiplic multiplicative equation. Just wanted to introduce some mathematics of Ubrica so you understand where we are coming from. 
on a very, very, very basic. And you can have this, this unit, which is called the fourth element triad in any village. I think we have mentioned this before, but maybe some people are new, they don't know about it. So universal basic income, that means wealth for everyone. Wealth for you, family, relatives, everyone in your chapter in your village comes from having a university science and technology park that is sharing knowledge directly with the community through a produce value addition center. So we can add value to the local produce and then you have a retail store where the value added products can be sold and then a health clinic where health can be where health can be experienced. This cannot happen without UBN. So this is raised to the power of UBN. I could not find the power function in this thing. But so this is raised to the power of UBN. Okay. That is what we're calling the utility value of UBN. So if I went to back to the slide from Bitcoin, this one here, if something like that had come in when Bitcoin was at this point, then you would not see this dip because this system, this system would kick in. So universal health access, it becomes the support structure for the, for the, what is it? For the commodity value of UBN. Universal basic income kicks in here and start bringing another value. This value comes in right here. And of course, this now, um, you, what is this? This um, Bitcoin would maintain a very, very good level at the top. But right now, because Bitcoin does not have such utility support, it keeps on dipping up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay? And so that's, the, that's where we are with UBN right now. And once UBN has taken off in that flush point, that J curve, you see that we're able to put this type of units in a community and you call them the fourth element triad because they have connection between the community that's a urcc it they have a university next to it and uh soko janja which is an online store and continues making money and multiplying money and then the growth is unstoppable unstoppable growth that ubn it by itself can be unstoppable on them in on the market but only to a certain point it reaches the limit and then starts dropping okay all right, so that's, um, that's about it. But before we go, I'll tell you why UBN is better to do this than Kenya sharing or any other money. And this comes from the, the, the second, law, um, second law of the more dynamic equation, like information theory. You can see this whole thing has got a lot of theoretical power from physics. And then uh, the theory that drives here is the information theory. We talk about how the the how information travels. Mm -hmm. And somebody called Shannon in 1948 gave us a very comp very basic, very basic equation of the, the power of um, information channel. And if money is considered as a channel of information, this would tell you why uh, digital money, let's say blockchain money, cryptocurrency is much, much more powerful to do that work for taking care of, of universal basic income than fiat currency anywhere in the world. Now, in this equation, you see the maximum achievable data rate or the achievable rate of transmission of data from say university into the village depends on the bandwidth, which is the channel bandwidth. That means how much, what is the volume of money you can have, okay? Now in our case, we have say Kenya shilling. You see, what is the bandwidth of Kenya shilling? <laughs> Kenya shilling is very limited in bandwidth because there's only a little. And usually before it comes here, it is stolen by people, okay? Number two, no, now log two base two, that is because you either have it or you don't. Uh -huh. So log two base two multiply by one plus the signal, which is the power of the knowledge that we have in the brain, the power to add value to products. That's called power, signal. Since for example, you have a professor in JQuart, and he wants to bring, or maybe a student <laughs> or whatever, wants to bring knowledge to the community. The knowledge is very clean and very pure. That's a signal power. So, but that doesn't matter if the person is very knowledgeable or anything, because that signal is divided by the noise in the money that is S over N. 
noise or power in what noise in Kenya shillings, you know, come from very, very many places. Number one, Kenya shilling is created for people with money. And you cannot get money in Kenya shilling or even US dollars if, if you don't have money. Say you've been working in the university for 10, 20 years, you didn't have money to buy a big truck of land to take to the bank a title deed so they can give you a loan now to, to do your work. Where are you going to get the money from? You either go and ask other people to give you title deed or you get nothing, so your signal is dead. As you see, signal here is very clear, but the noise in terms of how the money is issued is very high. When the noise is high and the signal is, is low, the equation becomes zero. Because if you're very high, 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 uh, what, you know, high noise, and then you, this is low plus one plus, mm -hmm. one plus um, the signal of a very high noise, log of this, uh, log to base two of this equation becomes zero. Log of zero is zero. Even if you, you had a lot of money which you don't have, then it doesn't work. By contrast, you can, we can create Ubricoin, and of course we have created Ubricoin, and this money doesn't have to be given because somebody has a title deed. Now this money, you can come into the university as direct investments, as what you call venture capital, into the university, or into the, whatever, into the village, whoever has ideas, this money can be given, and you can see we can improve this signal capacity. As a matter of fact, the capacity for uh, digital money like Ubricoin to, uh, to, to transport information, to transport knowledge, this transport here, the capacity for transporting this knowledge for digital money is a billion times more than capacity for Kenya shilling. This is why in Kenya, it is very difficult for, for knowledge to travel out of university just because the channel capacity for money is very, is very, very low. Okay, the channel capacity is low or absent. And when channel capacity for transportation of knowledge in a community is low or absent, we end up with produce with no value added. And this produce with no value added are rushed to the market without value addition. And that market is known as Sokom Jinga. Sokom Jinga is at the typical market you find in Kenya, and it's everywhere. Sokom Jinga is a market for things that have no value addition. See? That is where we are, Riman. Sokom Jinga is a place where you go and fight things with no value addition. So we say, let's introduce UBN. This one has a billion times the capacity for, for Kenya, like, you know, capacity billion times bigger than Kenya shilling, or in the fiat, even dollars are not doing this job. That way, we can have so-called ginger, smart markets, smart market for things. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, unless we do this thing, we're going to continue being the third world. And now, we are seeing a new, absolutely new challenge coming in, known as virus or biology itself, viruses like corona. Now, the whole business of biology in the world is still in, in circumjigger because people haven't invested any money in biology. We just have health, health systems that have no biological investments. We have invested a lot of money in nuclear power. We can bomb people to death with smithereens, but we cannot deal with a small thing like a coronavirus. That is the problem. The, this channel for transportation of biological knowledge from, from, the, from the universities to communities doesn't exist. And this is what makes Ubricoin a global health project. We understand that the money, present structure of money in the world does not favor investments in biology. Reason being that biology is very, very, very complex. It's dense, dense with information and people are not willing to put money in high information science. Okay, so stop there. So now, the final thing maybe when I stop there, the call to action is I'm telling you to go to the, to the exchanges and buy all those UBNs that are sitting there. And I think we have maybe, yeah, we have three minutes. You go to exchanges. We've been talking before about getting into Phoenix box, places like this. And you know, the exchanges, Ubicoin is listed in several exchanges. Go there and buy as many Ubicoins as possible. As possible. That means not less than a million uh, UBNs because I want to show you something. 
that was standing. This is Ubricoin on um, on an exchange. And I want to show you what is happening and why you need to come up to action because you have had these two utility stuff. Uh, one is commodity. This is the commodity aspect of UBN, and in this in this aspect, you will see that in our in our what in a, in the market, a lot of people have listed UBNs for sale. This is, this is your last chance. There are 301 billion, uh, 301 million UBNs on uh, ETH market. That is for uh, UBN, UBN, you can buy or sell UB, UBCoin for Ethereum here. There is 301 million, but the price is very low. What you need to do is take out your your pass, get some money, and um, if you haven't been uh, here for training, we have had four weeks of trading classes. Uh, we can have this again for you. You can make a special request on how you buy this, how you how you do this. Go to the market and buy all these UBNs, all of them, all of them. It's possible. They are not much money. This is less than two thousand dollars. So get in there, buy them, and then. You will witness. You'll be there as witness and participant in this um, in in this event when UBN goes to the moon, like this. By buying those you those those UBNs, we get here very quickly. And the reason we are saying if you buy those UBNs is because most of them are held by Asians. <laughs> It'd be very bad if this event occurred without our people because UBN has gone back to Asia very quickly. Now, I, what I can do, because we have just about a minute left, I will stop this, then restart again right away, because I'm sure there are questions. People, I've seen, I've seen new people coming. Welcome. And then uh, we, we just have maybe 10 minutes of questions. Thank you so much. I've, I've, we'll be right back, so don't go away. Don't go away. Take, take a commercial break and then come back. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it seems.